Here it is, the rim versus disc, the final word. Well, my final word anyway. I don't plan to talk about this ever again, but lots of you have asked me what my opinion is on this, so here it is. Arriba! So the first thing to point out is that I'm completely biased on this topic. I thought I'd better mention that before we go any further. All my bikes are disc brake, mountain bikes, obviously. My winter road bike is disc brake and my summer race bike is disc brake. The only thing I would change in hindsight is that I got cable disc brakes on the winter bike. I can't recommend them. The hydraulic ones are just way better. With that in mind, I thought it would be very unfair if I went into this video with no empathy for the, the rim lovers. So I tried to come up with a way that would make me feel the same way that the people that love rim brakes and hate disc brakes feel. And I actually think I came up with something. This is the Land Rover Defender. It's been around for a very long time. I think this one's from 1979. And it never really changed all the way up to when they stopped making it. And I've driven a few of these around and there's nothing quite like it. They're not really very comfortable. They bounce you around all over the place. They're really hard to get around corners. But there's just something about them that makes you feel cool. And they look pretty cool. So it was to my horror when I realised that, I think it was in 2018, Land Rover stopped making these because they can't get through the safety tests anymore. And they released the new version. Ta-da! I can't even bear to look at this. That, to me, is not a Land Rover Defender. It's tantamount to Rage Against the Machine doing a duet with Boris Johnson to a Rod Stewart track. It really shouldn't be allowed. So when I think about that, that really does, I think, give me an insight into how people feel about disc brakes turning up and wrecking their rim brake happiness. I was at Glastonbury in 1994 where Rage Against the Machine headlined and to this day, that was still the best gig I've ever been to. Anyway, moving on. In a nutshell, it's over. The war is won. Well, mostly. The behemoth that is the bike industry's desire to have disc brakes on every genre of bicycle is bulldozering its way through the once happy world of the rim brake. And if you check out a website, treads.co.uk, they have a massive selection of bikes that you can choose from. And there's a filter for brake type and it tells you how many bikes there are of each disc or rim. And if you check that out, any mountain bike worth having has got disc brakes on it. Gravel bikes, same. Cyclocross, same. Hybrid bikes, even the same. Touring bikes, the same. There's a couple of genres holding out. BMX bikes, kids bikes, folding bikes, but even some of the folding bikes you can get disc brakes. Triathlon bikes are still winning. But seeing as all the pros are riding TT bikes with discs now, mostly, that will change pretty soon. So if you then look at the road bike category, disc brake equipped bikes outnumber the rim brake equipped bikes 353 to 156. So the rim brake bike, if you want to buy a new one, it's a dying breed. Buy it now. The last bastion of hope for the rim brake bike was the Pro Peloton, who have put up a gallant fight against switching over to discs. But the change from 2019 to 2020 has been quite dramatic. Loads of the early season races have been won on disc brake bikes. But what has become very apparent is not just sprint stages, not just flat stages. But if we take the Vuelta Andalusia stage one, pretty high finish. It was a good race, actually. was won by... Jakob Fuglsang on a disc-equipped Willier. And if you look at the full list of results from that, I guess it was a mountain. Mountain top finish. Obviously disc first. Disc, 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 disc. Rim, disc. I think that's probably a disc. Can't guarantee that. I'd have to check that. Disc, 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 disc. Still can't believe that Movie Star went to disc, but there we go. Disc, rim, and there's that funny one again. Have to check that one. But that is dramatically different to last year. It speaks a thousand words. So the pros and cons. I'm sure you know all this. Let's just go over it again quickly. The disc brake. Modulation is better. They just have really good feel. More power, especially in the wet. So if you ride anywhere like I do in the Yorkshire Dales, it's always wet. There's always potholes. There's always gravel. There's always slippery, slimy stuff all over the road. Discs are just always going to be better, especially if you like carbon rims, because rim brakes and carbon just don't go together, which takes us on to heat dissipation. Carbon rims and rim brakes really don't go 
go together very well. Long descents, you don't want to be dragging your brakes. It's pretty dodgy. That's not to say that disc brakes don't get hot and can't fail if you drag them down a long descent, but it's a whole lot better. You do have more chance of surviving it. Tire clearance. Rim brakes are hampered by the fact that the tire has to go through them and modern bikes are now moving to fatter tires and it also makes your bike more versatile because you can shove some big tires on, go and hit the gravel. Through axles. They can make the frame and fork more rigid, ploughing more of that incredible power from your legs into the road. Aero lighter rim profiles. Because we haven't got the pads dragging along the rims, if you've got disc brakes, it means the designers can get the rims absolutely as light and aero as possible. Hose integration. Since we've moved to disc brakes on road bikes, we've got a lot more bikes now where the hoses and cables are all integrated into the handlebars, which, though a nightmare to work on, definitely looks better and is more aero. So the cons, and there are some. Currently, rim brakes are lighter, disc brakes are heavier. While the UCI weight limit is at 6.8 kilograms, the pro bike with the discs on are not far off, and the, the climbers, as we've seen, don't seem to have too much of a problem with it at the moment. Nairo Quintana won on Monvon 2 the other day, and he absolutely blitzed them on his canyon with discs on. Low unadjustable tolerances. So the great thing about rim brakes is that you can just tweak the little doodah there and move the pads away from the rims if you've got anything that's rubbing. Currently you can't do that with discs. Hopefully that's something that they're going to work on as we see them developed over the years. And then finally maintenance. It's a heck of a lot easier to set up your rim brakes from scratch than it is to bleed and set up your disc brakes. But once it's all set up, changing the pads is relatively easy. If you ever take a disc brake bike to the bike shop and it comes back with rubbing discs, go to a different bike shop. It is not difficult to get it to work perfectly. So the other thing that the pros complained about was wheel changes. You're in a race, you get a puncture, you see the peloton ride off into the distance or some guy tries to change your wheel and then once he gets your wheel on it starts rubbing. I can totally appreciate that and I can see what their point but if you've got a mechanic that has practiced with one of these drills that he can even wear on his belt look, he can get those through axles in and out literally a second longer it'll take than a quick release and I watch a lot of racing and I've seen a lot of rim bike wheel changes that are just as slow as disc changes so that's all going to get better as well. So what about looks? The rim brake bike, the disc bike, rim brake, disc, rim brake. Now, at the end of the day, I just love bikes, really. And yeah, this bike looks amazing. I would be extremely happy to own that bike. <gasps> but it's a rim brake bike. But likewise, this is a bike too. But it's got disc brakes on it. But I, I think it looks great. I love this one too. Looks wise, I like them both. But right now, I'd buy disc because they're better. I also like the fact that with disc brakes, the designers are able to try new things out. Yeah, if that means we have to spend our money on new bikes, then, you know, at the end of the day, the manufacturers exist to make money. They're not really there to be our buddies, are they? And I like the way it's going. I think bikes are looking pretty cool. However, at the end of the day, there is one final word, or should I say two words, and that's Grand Tour. And until a disc bike wins a Grand Tour... Tour de France, Giro d'Italia, Vuelta a España, then the fight's still on. And as I make this video right now, there is some concern that the Giro d'Italia will be cancelled due to the coronavirus, along with Milan San Remo. I really, really hope that's not the case and that they manage to go ahead because I'd be absolutely devastated. So there we go. I'm also supposed to be flying to Tenerife on Sunday for a training camp and currently there's something like 700 holiday makers locked in a hotel in quarantine. So it's all a bit of a worry. Anyway, hopefully if you're watching this a few months on from when I've made it, it'll have all sorted itself out and everything will be back to normal and we can get racing again. Fingers crossed. So I'm sure that uh, people are going to have some pretty strong opinions of rim versus disc. So leave them in the comments down below. Try and keep it polite. Otherwise, I'd delete you from the channel anyway. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel.